Hey, ladies and gentlemen. We are doing a little exploring today. And as you can see, I'm back on Mount the Doctor. Doctor 650. I actually had an, another video scheduled to post for today. And I've decided to preempt that video for a video response to uh, Crichton. And he brought up a subject this week I find intriguing and I'm really not thoroughly educated on on the subject. So is there life on other planets? I don't know. Well, nobody knows, but do I think there could be life on other planets? And uh, I think yes. I think yes, there could be life on other planets. Um, now, do I think there probably is life on other planets? I don't know. That's that's a tough one. And again, I'm not well versed on on all the variables, but uh, some information that I've seen would lead me to believe that. It may not be as cut and dried as a lot of people think, especially since the Hubble was launched and now we realize that these things that we thought were stars 30 years ago are actually galaxies with millions and billions of stars in each one. So that's pretty cool stuff. It means there's a lot more chances of there being planets. And of course we understand it's possible that there are planets out there that we can detect without being able to see them just from, uh, I don't know, other types of radio telemetry, infrared stuff, star wobble, all kinds of things like these. This, but um, the reason I don't think it's as probable as it would appear on the surface is because of things like the Goldilocks zone, which is this area that our planet is in relative to uh, its distance to the sun. And basically only the Earth and Mars are in this Goldilocks zone as far as being able to have life. But that's only the Goldilocks zone for our, our sun and our solar system. Uh, there are so many, so many variables that are fine-tuned for life on our planet. And I think there's some diminishing returns as you apply all of these variables. Uh, to this vast amount of stars and planets that are out there somewhere else in the universe. Our gravity is, is a specific amount that has given way to life on this planet. And, you know, the fact that regardless of, of how the, the planets all came to be, because Crichton did mention, you know, the fact that this, this wasn't a religious topic, another creation versus naturalism conversation. But he did mention that uh, there are people that believe that the Bible inferred that there was only life on this planet. And number one, I, I don't think that the Bible anywhere infers that there only, there's only life on this planet. So, like I said, I think it's possible, and I don't think it's in, in any direct uh, disagreement with anything biblical. However, I will say that uh, the psalmist mentioned the reason why God created the universe, and that was to glorify himself. So, it is entirely possible that from 
a religious point of view that God would create the entire universe just to strike us with awe of how great he is. And only us. And I think it's entirely possible. I, I saw that Crichton interjected an argument I see a lot from people that would argue against uh, a God to begin with or anything that God does is why would he do it? I wouldn't have done it like that. And generally this argument stems from a lack of comprehension of the fact that if as I believe that God is an infinite being, uh, he is infinitely present and infinitely powerful, um, the argument that people often make is really from their own frailty and they never <laughs> they never realize it. Why would he do it like this? Why wouldn't he have done it in a more simple way? Why would he have, if, if only people existed on Earth, why would God make the universe so big? That looked like a DR. Well, why wouldn't he? If indeed he made it, as the psalmists say, uh, to glorify himself, to show us how big he is, why wouldn't he? Because he's not limited by resources like we are, and he's not limited by time like we are. It kind of reminded me of uh, a movie I've seen recently, The Wolf of Wall Street. Have you guys seen that? Uh, at one point, he's uh, DiCaprio's snorting cocaine through a hundred dollar bill and uh, he wads it up and throws it in a trash can full of, full of hundred dollar bills. Now, I can't comprehend throwing a hundred dollar bill away. Uh, even if I was wealthy. But I can't really, since I've never been there, I can't really comprehend being so wealthy that the worth of a single hundred dollar bill isn't that much, but that's the idea. That's the idea. If you've got infinite resources, trying to save on resources of any kind, whether it be physical resources or time or energy use, if all that's in infinite, trying to save and, and be more productive in that is not in your wheelhouse. It's nowhere near your thinking. It's far below your thinking. So, I've addressed kind of some things, some reasons why I, I think that God very well could have created this planet as the only planet in the universe that has life on it. If indeed the universe was created in some Big Bang type of way, and things just exploded out and became from the singularity or whatever, is it safe to assume that every planet is going to have the same basic, same basic elements in the same proportions as we have? You know, something as simple as iron, which is pretty common, and we've got just the right amount of iron to make our magnetic fields work in order for our life to survive, uh, work to keep the ionosphere from blowing away, the solar winds, which I understand that's what's happened to Mars. Uh, they think, you know, here's, that's another, another theory is that Mars did at one time have some kind of life on it, which I'm not convinced of that at this point. And at one time, Mars had a had an iron core which was molten and 
fun, which it's got you, you gotta have that too. You gotta have a molten iron core that's spinning to get that proper magnetic field to keep the atmosphere from being blown away. And I don't know how many variables there are. You know, the size of the sun, the distance of the planet from the sun, the the atomic makeup of the sun, how much hydrogen is in there, is there other stuff in there that would change the type of radiation that comes from the sun, or could there be life that absolutely doesn't resemble life on Earth at all, you know, if it came from some other silicon-based life instead of carbon-based life, what would that look like? Would we even be able to identify whether it was alive? I don't find it intriguing enough to really study in depth probably as much as a lot of you have. You may know a lot more answers than I do. So I'll just finish this monologue by saying that once you account all the variables in, I think that greatly reduces the number of planets that could possibly have at least the kind of life that we would understand as life. Carbon-based life with DNA. A, G, C, T type of DNA. I think if you lean really heavily on the statistical probability that because these numbers of stars are so huge, that the number of planets have to be that huge, even more huge, then you really need to take a look at something like the statistical probabilities of abiogenesis. It seems like some mathematicians sometime in the recent past have crunched the numbers and came up with a statistic of something as simple as hemoglobin, which all animal life has in order for the compounds to come together in that randomly and in the proper order, the odds of that happening are 1 to 10 to the 27th power against that just randomly happening. 10 with 27 zeros behind that which is more than there are estimated atoms in the entire universe. I'm saying if statistically, statistical probabilities say that there must be life on other planets, then even more powerful statistical probabilities say life couldn't have started on its own in the beginning. So you're right back to, well, they've got to make life on more than one planet, or just this one. Alright, this is Loud Pipes. I don't know how long this video is, but I'm out of here. Thanks for the great uh, topic, Brighton.